Good morning, everyone. This is Chuck King from Ford City, Pennsylvania, bringing you the Bible study number 313 on Saturday, January 23rd, 2021. And we are studying 2 Corinthians chapter 9 today. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 1 for it is superfluous for me to write to you about this ministry to the saints for i know your readiness of which i boast about you to the macedonians namely that achaia has been prepared since last year and your zeal has stirred up most of them so paul uh, continues to talk about this uh, this offering that's being raised for the churches in Jerusalem, the poor people suffering at that time, and Paul was raising this international missions offering and including uh, the churches from different nations. And in this case, we're talking about the Corinthian church and how Paul had bragged or boasted to the Macedonians. Remember, the Macedonians were the very impoverished and, and persecuted believers who were willing, willing to give, even though they had so little. And Paul was bragging to them about the Corinthians, telling them that it's been a whole year since the churches in Achaia. Well, that's, that's where Corinth is or was. And... Uh, and how zealous they were. And the, the, the testimony of the zeal of the Corinthians to give toward this, this mission project to help the poor in Jerusalem stirred up the Macedonians to the point where they, they were willing to sacrificially and generously give, though they had so little. Verse 3, But I have sent the brethren in order that our boasting about you may not be made empty in this case, so that as I was saying, you may be prepared. So he tells the Corinthians he sent sent a team to them, or sending a team to them, so that they would actually collect the offering, so that their boast wouldn't be empty, but they would actually give. And so uh, this is perhaps uh, what we were reading in the last chapter of First Corinthians, how at the beginning of of chapter 16, how Paul encouraged them to lay aside offerings on the first day of the week so it all would be gathered up so they wouldn't have to collect it when when they, they came there. It seems like that was the same offering he was referring to. Verse 4, Otherwise, if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we not to speak of you, will be put in shame by this confidence. So if uh, Macedonians came along with the team to collect the money from Corinth to take to Jerusalem, and Corinth uh, didn't have any money to give, they would be embarrassed by that, of course. Verse 5, So I thought it necessary to urge the brethren that they would go on ahead of, to you and arrange beforehand your previously promised bountiful gift so that the same would be ready as a bountiful gift and not affected by covetousness. So he's, he wants them to follow through. Apparently they had, they had promised a, a nice bountiful offering. And so Paul's sending the team to arrange for that. And that, that covetousness or or wanting to hold back the money would not affect their offering. Verse 6. Now this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So he's referring to their promise of a bountiful offering and encouraging them not to be sparing or sparingly give uh, that offering, but to bountifully give that offering so that their 
the sowing and reaping is always true. When you sow, you will reap. And so Paul says, you, if you sow a bountiful offering, you will reap bountiful blessings. And the opposite is true. If you sow sparingly, your, your uh, reaping will be sparingly. Verse 7, each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So people should not give offerings for the poor. And that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about offerings to support workers, although many of them uh, at that time especially were poor as well. The ones sent out with the, the, the financial support of the church, which is uh, what Jesus and the apostles taught, that the workman was worthy of his hire. As he sows spiritual things, he should reap uh, physical things or support. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the giving to the poor because they are suffering in, in their poverty. And so when we're talking about giving to poor people as leaders, we can't force anyone. We can't uh, compel them to give. But everyone needs to to be told about the need, that's that's necessary. People need to know about the, the hurting people, the suffering people that need our offerings. But then they should not, they should not feel uh, compelled or forced to give. But they should give not grudgingly or not because someone basically... Uh, pried it out of their closed fist, but they should give as a cheerful giver. And here's that scripture that I love to quote people, for God loves a cheerful giver. He wants us to give with the motive of joy and love to, to serve the other people and, and to glorify him. Remember the Bible says when we give to the poor, we lend to the Lord and he rewards those who give. So we know that we are laying up treasure in heaven by giving to the least of these. And even though we give of our, our natural material substance and it costs us something to do so, we are actually putting that, that uh, gift to the poor in a very safe place in our account in heavenly places. That's what the Bible teaches. God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. So Paul is connecting giving to the poor with God responding to that sowing of giving to the poor, he responds with reaping in our lives of all grace, all sufficiency, uh, abundance for, uh, for every good deed. So Paul says that God responds with blessings and grace upon those who give to the poor. I mean, that's clear from the context here. And, and he's trying to tell them, look, if you, if you give grudgingly and, and complain and, and hold back and just give a small offering instead of the abundant one that you promised, uh, you will not receive this kind of grace from God because God loves a cheerful giver. And he, he provides grace to those who support what he says is important, which is helping the poor. Verse 9, as it is written, and here's a quote from Psalm 112, 9. He scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. So Paul quotes an uh, Old Testament scripture to the Gentile churches to, to let them know that when we give to the poor, it's a righteous deed that endures forever. Verse 10, now he who supplies 
seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So he's using this metaphor of sowing seed as uh, God supplying seed to the one who sows and also bread for food. Uh, speaking of God, he's the one who supplies everything that we need in order to feed ourselves. Paul says he, God, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. So there it is again. If we sow generously, we will reap generously. And part of that reaping is God pouring out his grace upon us, as Paul says in verse 8, for all sufficiency, for abundance and every good deed, that God responds to the cheerful giver and, and the generous giver. Verse 11, you will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. So he keeps going here. God will enrich us in, in, in everything liberally. And because of that, because of that sowing into the, the, the lives of the least of these, the poor, those who need our help, by sowing generously and, and joyfully into the lives of the poor, the promise here is that, that we will be enriched in everything. Liberal for all liberality, and and this produces thanksgiving to God. So now he closes out this chapter uh, by by sharing the the chain reaction you might say that occurs when we become cheerful givers. When we become cheerful givers to the poor, God responds by pouring out into our lives abundant grace and provision. That's not why we do it. It's not. This isn't the teaching of the false teachers that, that preach if you give a thousand dollars to buy ministry, you'll, you'll be out of debt and you'll receive tenfold that. Those, those kinds of twisted teachings of, of, of material prosperity. No, we're talking about a motive that is of love and service to the poor, cheerful giving. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver. And we know that from the other scripture, Paul teaches us, the Lord said it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there's a great blessing in giving to those in need. And I've already taught about don't give your gifts to the rich. That's a sure way to, to become impoverished because God will not God in his word says he won't bless that. But when we give to the poor, we lend to the Lord and he rewards us. And we see here that Paul is, is, uh, is teaching clearly that when we are a cheerful, generous giver, that God will pour out his grace upon us and it, it will produce thanksgiving to God. God will receive the glory for this. Let's read the last few verses. Verse 12. For the ministry of this service, meaning the offerings to the poor who need help, is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, in this case it would be in Jerusalem, but is also overflowing through many thanksgivings to God. So by giving to the poor, we supply their needs, which is very important but also causes God to be glorified. Many thanksgivings are, are poured out as incense before the throne of God. Verse 13, because of the proof given by this ministry, because you've actually done it, you've given the money and we've delivered it, they, meaning the poor, will glorify God for your obedience to your confession of the gospel of Christ and for the liberality of your, of your contribution to them and to all. So you see the process? God uses willing 
disciples who cheerfully give generous offerings to the poor and the needs of the poor are met and then that giving becomes the fruit, the good fruit, the proof of your obedience to the gospel. And so God gets glorified by the poor who receive the support from those who send it. Verse 14, while they also, by prayer on your behalf, yearn for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. So we give to the poor uh, with uh, generously and willingly and, and, and abundantly, and God blesses us, pours out much grace into our lives to give us sufficiency in all things, both spiritual and material. This is what I, I see here. And, and then the people who receive the money, their basic needs are met, plus they begin to glorify God for your good testimony and your obedience, your good fruit to obey the word of God. And then they begin to pray for you. They begin to pray for you. And they want, they, they yearn for your fellowship because they see the grace of God working in you. And Paul exclaims, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This whole process of giving and receiving and being blessed and glorifying God and yearning for fellowship with the brethren. This is, this is the work of God. This is the work of, of the Holy Spirit. This is a gift from God. Now, I, I tell you that uh, we've been helping people in need for many, many years, since 1984 and even before when I first began to travel overseas. We've been helping those in great need and pouring out blessings on them. And I will tell you that God has honored that and blessed us and blessed our individual families and ministries because we have been obedient to serve him by, by pouring out abundance on the least of these. And they are giving thanks to God continually for the help that they're getting from generous people here in the United States. And they're lifting up praise to God. And, and not only that, they're praying for us. Where would, I have to say, where would I be without the prayers of the international church that are lifting up by faith? And these are, these are people of faith. They're, they're, they're people who believe God. And they are lifting us up and praying for us. What a blessing. What a gift from God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we have learned from 2 Corinthians 9 about giving generously and abundantly and not with the wrong attitude or holding anything back. And that you've promised us treasure in heaven, your, your abundant blessings uh, to be poured out upon us as we, we sow in the ministry to the poor. We will reap abundant benefits from you of grace and provision uh, in abundance. Thank you, Lord, for that. And even more, by giving like this and delivering the gifts to the poor, we prove our obedience to you and cause all those dear brethren to give thanks to you for your provision through the generous offerings. And then, Father, thank you that they pray for us and lift us up before your throne and you hear and answer prayer and this koinonia fellowship that is made possible through generous gifts to the poor is a, is a gift from you. Bless us as we continue, Lord. Give us that vision to do even more, to glorify you and to cause your name to be lifted up among the nations. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good. Thank you for being with us. That's a powerful chapter as well. And we're always learning together. Please share the teachings uh, with your uh, friends and family that 
the vision of the scripture might get deep down inside of us and we begin walking in obedience even as this first century church did and we become the people of God who are a blessing and who become blessed because of that obedience. So the Lord bless and keep you safe and strong in him and fruitful in the ministry he's called you to. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.